Third and fourth period, hello. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a lesson on organizing your senior research paper so that there's some clarity in how to do it. If you wanted to take out a notebook or have a separate little document open to take some notes, that would really help you, behoove you so that when you start writing you remember this or you can just re-watch the video in parts uh, since this is on YouTube. Uh, first of all uh, I want you to remember that your entire paper this is an example that I found but your entire paper is going to be in double space. So step one you would write your name, my name, uh, your English class, so English 8, and then the date. Now you would leave this date finished or empty until the exact moment you're ready to submit your essay, whatever day that is, your research paper, that will be the date that you're going to put here. Now, if you remember, I'm going to come right over here to this box. I actually will upload this too uh, so that you have it. Um, you need to make sure that you write your paper in double space font 12 points if you don't remember how to change the points it's right here in your Google document where you'll be writing your essay right if you're not sure on how to double space the quickest way is right here is an arrow that's pointing up and down and it says line spacing if you do double then it will automatically set what you're doing and to double space and that's what you want to happen it makes it easier for me to read and to edit because traditionally um, you would have written this on paper and you having it double space would give me room to write in the margins it still is the standard for, for MLA uh, for writing papers it just makes it simpler to read which is more effective uh, so you need to write the date, the month, and the year exactly in this format, the number. Now if you write the month, uh, for you guys it's going to be April or May, uh, you don't abbreviate those anyway, but when you write your month you don't abbreviate it. Um, also, uh, you need to set up your paper so that it has a last name, your last name, and the number of the page it's on. And to do that, you would go to um, your document. You would double click at the top of the page, which opens up the header. Uh, you're going to go to page numbers. Numbering start at one. Good. Um, oops, but we wanted to do that over here. So sorry. Guess I'm relearning too. Uh, let's do newly. options page number one there and so now you have your header and so that for each page it will number ascending one two three four five etc so there we have that um, remember the title of your essay is centered right above your first line of text. Uh, it's not bolded, it's not underlined. It also needs to be the exact same font size as the text of the uh, article, of the research paper. Now, this little green button up here is really important. Um, it says use personal pronouns at your instructor's discretion. You guys know, we've already discussed, you guys will not use personal program pronouns, no I, no we, no us, as you're writing your paper. You're going to write your information as if it is the truth. So you don't need to create this and write it in a way in which it seems like it is uh, an opinion piece. So uh, this particular person, uh, this paper does have personal pronouns and that's fine, but let's count. Uh, one sentence, two sentences, three sentences, 
and then the thesis statement. And that is exactly what you guys will do. You will have four sentences in your introduction. You're going to have your hook, whichever one that you chose to write. Then you're going to have two uh, body paragraph sentences that lead a little deeper into what your topic is. Then you will explain the thesis statement. Uh, the, a great way to do it is just to have your topic is the first word in that sentence. We've discussed that already. So you could say uh, gay marriage, right? That's the topic in America is very contentious, but all gay people should be able to get married because, and then you would have your three reasons, one reason, comma, second reason, comma, and third reason, comma. Or if your paper's on abortion, your topic uh, would be, you could say something like, abortions should not be allowed in America because, and then you would have your three reasons. Remember, I want your thesis to be that fourth sentence, the last sentence uh, in your first paragraph. This is going to help you develop your paper because each of your two paragraphs is going to be about one of your details in your thesis statement. There's three of them, so two, four, six paragraphs plus your introductory paragraph and the conclusion at the end. Um, if your paper is longer than that, if you need three or four paragraphs for one of your particular details, you absolutely can do that. Just try not to lose yourself in what you're doing. If you remember, I did give you guys um, an outline for your research paper. The bottom of week one in your PDF file, there is an outline. Now I can repost this again as an assignment just so you have it and see where you are. Now you guys should have already turned this in. I've had very few of you do that. Um, but it explains your introduction, what your paragraph should be about, and it allows you, there's room for you to write in your uh, details for each of your paragraphs, which makes it so much easier to write. So remember that. Okay, next. Um... Remember to double space throughout the entire document. We've explained that. Uh, now we're going to get into a little bit of work cited to explain how you're going to um, get that together. Now, once you start writing each of your details, you can put the title of what your particular detail is for the next couple of paragraphs here on the left side. But before you submit your document, I want you to delete it or after I edit it and give it back to you for final proofing, uh, I will have you delete it. For some students, it really helps them to stay organized with the details, uh, the subject area of each of their sections because it can get a, a little complex. Um, and that is okay. Okay, now let's talk about adding in your footnotes. As you're writing, if you take a specific phrase or sentence that an author said from one of the websites or documents that you found, academic information, uh, you remember that you're going to write it in as a quotation and then you write the specific sentence. You put quotations and then the author's last name in this instance, it's Dan Hoff, uh, and you're going to put number five for the page number. And here's Dan Hoff in the Works Cited page. So by putting it in the paper, you're allowing yourself a couple things. You're allowing the reader to be able to find and back up the information you put in, and it sort of organizes yourself for when you start putting together your work cited page, which will be a lecture that I will be putting together uh, in a bit.
Uh, not today, but in another day we'll be doing that particular lecture. So there's one way to add your uh, information. Now, if you're giving a strict fact, not just words that an author said, this particular person found information that says the urban population defined as having over 2,500 inhabitants in the northern states increased after 1820. So here is that information in the works data page. Here. So that's footnote one. And you should have multiple footnotes. And remember, you give your point, back it up with information. You give your point, back it up with information. So sometimes as you look here, guys, you can have multiple, multiple, multiple uh, footnotes and quotes that you will cite from various authors. And really, in some level, it gives your paper more validity, and it also, there's a little secret hint for those of you going on to English 101 next semester at college, it really helps you to fill out your paper. So make sure that you are um, adding these in here. They're very, very important. Now, also, we need to discuss your transitions. I'm going to do a little lecture on that fully in the next coming days. But remember, transitions, see here, they connect your paragraphs and unify your writing from the end of one paragraph to the next. For instance, therefore, developments were made for knowledge to be transmitted and recorded right, in a more permanent, credible way by print, right, by writing, newspapers. Um, now, in the next paragraph, it says the distribution of new knowledge. Um, almanacs, newspapers, journals. So the transition is from thus new knowledge was transmitted orally from farmer to farmer, but then there was a new way, which is explained in this paragraph. If you have any more issues with, if you have any issues with transitions, watch my other video that I will be putting up in a couple of days. Um, and a great way to think about it again, guys, is the four elements in your or in each paragraph is your transition, which is here, a topic sentence. Uh, after 1820, however, agricultural writing took more forms than almanacs and newspapers. And then you, after he writes his information, he has a nice little uh, background. Uh, excuse me, he has a nice little wrap-up sentence.